Pittsburgh Steelers 2022 roster grades. Uh, Mike Tomlin, your team better be pretty good this year. Here we go. Hit that intro. And as always, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the final NFL. Like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy. Um, we'll start out with the news. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs tight end Blake Bell out for, after surgery on, on unusually hip flexor injury. Yeah, that's kind of a funky injury to have, but really weird, I guess. Uh, year two jump for Mac Jones key to Patriots success in 2022. I don't know if we'll have a huge jump because, well, you don't want Matt Patricia calling your place. Whatever. Um, uh, can Jahan not to be a fantasy starter in his rookie season? No, because points per reception, yeah, but. He won't get in the end zone a lot, and his yardage won't be total. But if you want a guy for points for reception, you gotta get Jahan Dotson, so he's not the worst flex to have. Yeah, that's um the news. Let's get right into the video. He's always starting out with the cornerbacks. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, Trubisky is the presumed starter. Of course, started three years in Chicago. Uh, uh, I'll be honest with you, he has improved from what he was in 2019. I really don't think he was ever a bad quarterback. Like, he was, obviously wasn't that great in 2019. 2018, though, obviously had a really good year. But we look at 2019, 62% completion, 7 touchdowns, 10 interception, 3,138 yards. Um, he had, uh, what is it, took 38 sacks, though, really stunk it up there. Um, he's always been a mobile quarterback, I'll be honest with you on that. Like, I think his peak was definitely 2018, but he he can really help on this offensive line because, trust me, he can really get out to the packet, can run a lot of read options. He'll really help, help out Najeris with that as well. Of course, in 2019, his PFF grade was not good. Probably because his decision-making, like, it's never been that great. His arm talent has never been that great. He's been fairly accurate in terms of, like, fairly accurate. He's not been, like, bad in terms of accuracy. But, whatever. Mason Rudolph, um, it's Chris Adolkan, whatever his name is. Yeah, he's still on the Steelers. He's not on the roster for this, though. Probably because he's practice squad, whatever. Uh, Mason Rudolph, he's basically a backup. I wouldn't say he's a bad backup, actually. He's honestly a pretty good backup, um, but gets the job done. Uh, obviously, everyone knows him for the helmet incident, but whatever. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett, um, I, of course, I scouted out of the draft 20 pick. Uh, probably the best quarterback coming out of the draft in terms of, like, everything. Um, not the most athletic dude, but he's pretty athletic. He's got manageable mobility. Like, I'd give, like, a C, but... His arm talent is decent. He doesn't have bad arm talent. His uh, arm strength is a little underrated, to be honest with you. But his footwork and his touch are needs some work, and his decision making is a little, little inconsistent. But that's nitpicking. Yeah, that's his quarterback room. Okay, for the grade, I give him a C minus. So being completely honest, this is, I don't think the quarterbacks gonna be the reason they're gonna st uh, not be great this year. Like. I think it's going to be a little better than Ben Roethlisberger, but let, let's be honest, this is not a great quarterback room. Mitch Trubisky, yeah, I think he'll be decent, but he's not going to be anything special, in my opinion. People are going to be hyping him up. I don't think he'll be that great, but C- is what I'll give him now, and like, the fact they have some depth there as well is not the worst in the world. 17.33 out of 30. Time for this running back position. Obviously, Najee Harris is starting back uh, in the back, back um, running back. Uh, 3.9 yard per carry kind of just tells you this offensive line is, was absolutely horrible last year. The one concern I have with Najee Harris is, though, he can't get him 307 carries. Um, yeah, he was a workhorse last year. He had a ton of catches, but Najee Harris really wasn't explosive last year, which is a little bit of a concern because in Alabama, that was one of the things you liked with him. But he had 90, yeah, he had literally had 74 catches. He had 381 touches that led the NFL. You don't want a guy like him getting that many touches, like anybody really. Yards before contact, yards after contact, kind of just tells you this offensive line um, wasn't, didn't really create that many holes. He just needs to be more decisive because he has the vision for it. It's just the fact that he's not always decisive when he goes into the hole. He knows where they are. He's really good at reading blocks, but yeah. Uh, Najee Harris look like a lot. Just don't give him as many carries as last um, this year. I'll just be straight up honest with you. But then you got Jalen War uh, Warren, of course, out of Oklahoma State. This dude, power back. <laughs> he's literally a power back. Yeah, he's 5'8". This dude's a bowling ball, though. Look at him catching this um, uh, pass in the um, to get to the Big 12 championship. Yeah. 
Uh, Jalen Warren, see you know, he's literally a bowling ball, and he actually can catch out of the backfield, too. He's really averse to that. The reason he went on undrafted, though, was the fact, didn't he get, like, hurt or something? I forgot what happened with Jalen Warren. Probably because, yeah, he wasn't even a starter in Oklahoma State anyway. But, yeah, Jalen Warren's fine. Betty Snell Jr., not the worst backup. Again, his power back really um, not efficient, though. He really needs to work on just being able to get down the field, down the hill faster and get in top speed faster. But if he can do that, I think he'll be a, a serviceable backup. Anthony McFarlane Jr. has really been a disappointment in his career so far. Like, Last year, he didn't really get any playing time, but in 2020, he got some snaps, and he really didn't really just do anything, like, at all. Even against the Texans, like, he had, that's his best career game. But, yeah, he's really just a depth guy in this team, to be honest with you. But, yeah, that's his running back room. It's really intriguing, and, of course, Najee Harris is the number one here. Okay, I'm going to give him a B in this backfield. I like it a lot. There's some good depth, uh, good versatility, but, of course, Najee Harris... Hope he doesn't get as many carries as he did last year. They really need Jalen Warren to step up as well, who I do think is actually a, has really good vision. Again, he's kind of a bowling ball, and he's and he's good out of the backfield too. So, and he's not the fastest dude in the world by any means. He's got some good acceleration, good evasiveness. He's not the worst player. So that comes at 3.67 plus 12, 15.67 uh, 20 time for this type of wide receiver position. Okay. Deontay Johnson was his number one receiver. He really showed you what he was last year, which is a guy who's a really good route runner. Really, really good route runner. And his hands seem to have come back. Of course, his hands are not anything elite, but he's just such a freakish route runner at this point in his career. He's so, I wouldn't say evasive, but he's elusive. Tough tackle in the open field. Uh, look at his yak yards. Where is it? Yeah, 527 yards is really good. Um... Yeah, three interceptions in the past target. He did three uh, drop percentage, which is actually a lot better. I'm actually kind of surprised he was that low, but yeah. Deontay Johnson's proved so, proved himself so as a number one receiver. Really great year last year. Maybe not as good as this year, but also be really good. And if he get down the field a little more, which he was able to a little bit last year, that would be really nice. Like, his average depth of target wasn't anything crazy. Where was it? Yeah, 8.5, which isn't bad, but like, in 2019, he was really getting downfield, which is what I want to see as well. Chase Claypool, that big jump ball guy, his hands, again, are not any special. He is actually not the fastest dude in the world, surprisingly, but he's a big dude. He's really good with, um, he's actually not a terrible route runner either. His, um, release isn't bad, really just a jump ball guy. George Pickens, really good athlete, like, really, really good athlete. Really good at getting downfield, obviously, but he, his speed really isn't that elite. It's more the fact that he gets off the line super fast, his acceleration is up there with the best. Not only that, though, but... <laughs> George Piggins is just so athletic in terms of, ju like, his j jump ball, so catch those as well. Of course, the one thing is, in his attitude's not great, and his, um, like, technic uh, tech like technically, he's not that great, I'll be honest with you. Um, comparisons to Antonio Brown, yeah, maybe, but he's not as precise. He doesn't seem, like, as, like, intent on being precise as well with his craft. But, yeah, George Piggins, really just an athlete right now. We'll see what he can do for later. And, of course, he showed a lot of potential. Calvin Austin, of course... Out of Memphis uh, this year, fourth round pick. He was literally like their bomb guy. Like guy, I get deep, I absolutely burn. Uh, that's literally what he does. He has a foot injury though. Uh, he's got he's got serious deep threat um ability. I'll be honest with you. And even in the red zone, he's like super like quick as well, which is really cool to see. It's kind of effortless. Miles Blakeman really just an underneath receiver at this point in his career, but he's not that bad. Uh, Cody White though, not a guy you want to have starting out there. I'll tell you that. He kind of gets destroyed at the line, and yeah, that's kind of about it for this receiving core. I'll give this receiving core a B minus. Uh, Chase Claypool, no offense, he kind of gets shut down a lot. I'm being honest. Uh, George Pickens obviously has a lot of potential, but that dude has some uh, big feet, hitter problems. Kind of full of himself. Uh, and technically, he's not that great. Uh, but yeah, of course, Jackson Johnson is their number one, so they have that at least. And there's at least some depth, but I don't love this receiving core a lot. But I'll be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I think it'd be minus. They do have the MC John. No, C plus. C plus. Oh, no, I, can't, I gotta give him a B minus. I'm really torn here. B minus. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be nice. B minus for this Steelers receiving core that comes out to 3.33 plus 12 is 15.33 out of 20 times for this tight end position. Okay. Pat Fryer moved. Last season, really inconsistent in terms of, like, receiving, but he did have seven touchdowns. The one thing you got to learn about him is he's not going to get downfield a lot. Like, he really didn't last year, but I think he'll get utilized more there. And not only that, though, he was actually a really good blocker. He's arguably the best run blocker on this team. I'm not even kidding. But, yeah, that's, like, the one concern with him. He's not, like, he doesn't really get downfield, which is a little a little bit of an issue. Zach Gentry, though, he's kind of a freak in terms of um, athleticism. And he's actually not a bad um, tight end overall, but... 
He struggled with run blocking. He struggled with outrunning. He struggled getting off the line. That's the one issue with him. Connor Hayward, of course, he's literally just an athlete. I'll be honest. He's just a pick at Michigan State. Uh, he was Michigan State's number one tight end as well. But, of course, he's brothers with Cameron Hayward. Uh, Connor Hayward, I do think, could be decent in this league. But there's a reason he got picked in the sixth round. I'll tell you that. Okay, tight end B. Um, I don't, on paper, I do think this is a decent tight end run. Uh, but Pat Fryer moves. If he gets hurt, they're kind of screwed, being honest. But Zach Gentry, when he's came in, he really hasn't been that bad. As, of course, like, Madden doesn't really say he's been good. But Madden doesn't really matter. So, that's, um, uh, 8, eight plus, uh, that's 11.67 out of 15. Time for this offensive line. And Jesus, this offensive line's bad. If you don't know, Derek Watts actually a decent front blocker, but Dan Moore Jr. I'm sorry, he stunk up, stunk it up last year. The one thing I thought he could do well, which was be, he's very, he was actually very agile coming out of the draft. Uh, not a lot of sacks. He gave up seven, which isn't the worst considering how many guys he had to go up against. And being like literally the only guy in this offensive line, but yeah, Dan Moore Jr. is really it. Joe Haig, awful backup, like super bad. Like he shouldn't even be in the NFL. But the reason he's here is because he's of that. Uh, Kevin Dotson. Bad as well, like really bad. He's actually not the worst pa um, pass blocker as many people might think he is. It's more the fact that his run blocking just doesn't work. They don't create any penetration as well. They do swarm some holes, but they just don't create any penetration. Kendra Green, of course, threw around pick in 2021. Uh, really didn't play well last year as a backup, but I gotta be honest with you, kind of had the backs up against the wall, his wall when uh, you have, who was it? I forgot. Yeah, JC Hassender as your center. Um, Mason Cole's awful as well, uh, but James Daniels is literally the only guy on, on this offensive line you can, like, really say anything about. Um, of course, Daniel Jr. is young. Like, he, got, he was a fourth-round pick out of Texas A&M. Uh, a lot of potential. I, he's actually really athletic, really uh, really agile, but if he can hold his hold his line more and he has quicker hands and he's really better at, be, at technically being better with his feet, I think he could be really good. Uh, but, yeah, that was, that's just a lot of potential. He wasn't really that. That bad last year, but he's pretty bad. James Daniels is literally the only good guy in this offensive line. Like, he's been good since he came in the NFL. Literally the only good guy. But isn't he like 24, too? Yeah. Yeah, he's literally this offensive line, being completely honest. Uh, John LeGlue, um, he's glue in terms of sticking with, um, sticking with the, um, def with the defensive lineman, but they just absolutely, like, unstick from him really fast. Tumo Okafor, probably the worst tackle in the NFL last year. I'm not even kidding. He was... He was so, so, so bad. Um, PLF Green, man, no, it's not good. Yeah, it's because he held so much. He had, like, nine holding penalties last year. Something crazy like that. Trent Scott, uh, that a grambling. Actually, not the worst backup, I'll be, com I'll be completely honest. When he's coming, he's actually kind of bullied some guys, but not the guy he wanted to start, I'll say that as well. But Chaz Green, Chaz Green, no offense, good bet in terms of, like, what he's done in the NFL in preseason, but overall, this offensive line is an absolute crapshoot other than James Daniels. I'll give it a D because James Daniels at least makes it somewhat decent, and the depth isn't, all, like, nothing. There, there's something there in the depth, but I can't give it a D minus. It's not that, that bad, but Jesus this is a really, really bad offensive line. Time for this overall offensive grade and average. Okay, so it comes out to 66 out of 100, which is a D plus. Are they that bad? No, give them a C minus. Uh, this offense is not good. Uh... It's going to struggle this year. I don't think it's D. It's not that bad. But C might be actually... I don't even know if it's average, to be honest. Because this offensive line is really bad. Quarterback is not ideal. I'll be honest with you there. Running back, like I said, it's good. But Najee Harris cannot get that many carries. It's just... It's not good for a running back. Uh, wide receiver, really inconsistent. I'll be honest with you. Tight end is probably the best position on this offense. A lot of inconsistency with this team, though. And that's why I got to give them a C-. minus Because... They're, they're definitely below average, if we're being completely honest. So, C-66 out of 100. Time for this defense. Okay, the Jaguars. I mean, not the Jaguars. Steelers were not 3-4, so just the inside linebackers. Devin Bush, uh, of course, in 2019, he was an absolute monster. Looked like one of the best young linebackers in the NFL um, in 2019. Uh, yeah, his, his numbers might not say that, but trust me, he was really good. 2020, uh, he tore his ACL. Uh, 2021... He was absolutely awful. And it was for two reasons. One, he was coming off a torn ACL. We probably got rushed back too early. And he just lost a step. And number two, he really struggled with um, anticipation. Of course, he had an injury anyway. But, and it's even more than an injury. But he still made some plays. Like, he was 
absolutely abysmal in pass coverage, though. Like, yes, seventy point two isn't like at like the worst in the NFL. Keeps touchdowns. Um, but like stats might not be too bad. But he got burned a lot underneath. Like he could he couldn't make many tackles underneath. Like it wasn't like he missed them. He just like couldn't get there. He, he really lost a lot of steps, which is one of the things he like thought about with Devin Bush. He's really fast. He gets there like when he needs to. His pat and his none of that though. It was like the quicker guys just got him. He and none of that though. He really lost a lot of confidence and he wasn't really hitting holes hard. Wasn't really anticipating plays well. That's why they brought in Miles Jack, who yeah had a down year last year, but in 2020 he was one of the best line under uh, linebackers in the NFL. Miles Jack is really good. Of course, didn't have the best year last year. I'll be completely honest, but still I think we'll get back back there in pass coverage, especially um, when it comes to tackling. Roberts Beline, literally just a sure tackler, if that if I'm gonna completely be honest. Can't really um get much done in pass coverage, but has been a decent backup. Marcus Allen is a complete opposite. Really raw player, of course, 2018 out of Penn State. He was literally puts out there to um cover um slots even sometimes. And uh fast tight ends. That's his job. Uh not really good with jump balls, not really that technically sound, especially not hitting the um run lanes fast at all really. And he misses some run lanes as well, but overall not the worst guy in the world. I'll give his lineback for a C plus because there's no way Devin Bush should be as bad as he was last year. He was absolutely awful. But on the same side, their depth is a little concerning. It's not the worst though. And of course, uh, Miles Jack is there now, so that really helps out. Time for this defensive line. Okay. Levi Wallace last year, a lot of what happened was he got burnt, I'll be honest with you. He got burnt a lot. But in the red zone, like he actually was decent. Like he did give a touchdown in the red zone last year, but he got burnt a lot last year, I'll be completely honest. 58%, yeah, against, but he, he got 81 targets for a reason. He had two touchdowns. These were bombs, too. Like, he got burned a couple of times, and he misses a lot of tackles, too. Not a really sound player, to be honest. He's kind of just average, but in terms of playing zone and being, and being like, man-to-man -man in the red zone, he's not bad whatsoever. Uh, Cam Sutton, he's going to be their number one this year. He was honestly really, really good last year. Uh, the thing, thing with him is, uh, again, is he really good? able to shut down the number one receiver. He was not the number one guy last year. Of course, yeah, say what you want about the PFF grade, but on film, he looked really good. Um, Akella Witherspoon, he's a slot dude that just doesn't really play slot well. That's why he has three interceptions. He gets targeted a good amount, and he's just not a good tackler. He peaked with the 49ers in coverage, but I gotta admit, he's not, like, the worst slot you could have. 37.8. I didn't know it was that good. Like, I don't think I, I know he yeah, gave that people a bad touchdown. Whatever. Um, there's 28.6 tackle for miss percentage. There's a reason for that. Um, he's kind of like a bad slot, but like, I guess he's gotten better in coverage. Because while I'm watching on film, he gave up that touchdown. I'm like, dang, he got absolutely crossed up. But I guess he had a good year in the slot. Uh, James Pierre, there's a reason he, uh, he was a UDFA, but solid last year as a backup. I'm not even joking. He shut down some good receivers. I like what he sees. Uh, not gonna lie, if he has to go up against a big receiver, I'm a little scared. But other than that, this dude looked really good last year. Uh, Arthur Mallet, oof, ah, didn't play well last year. As an older dude, you kind of expect him to at least be able to sh uh, shut down someone. Didn't really do that last year. Justin Lane, kind of a backup, to be honest with you, special teamer. But yeah, a gunner guy. But overall, this actually not the worst cornerback for my, I, I'm actually kind of surprised. Okay, defensive line and A. The only reason I'm not giving them an A plus is because they kind of get dominated sometimes. I'm being completely honest, but on paper, it's almost perfect. But I can't give it. I can't give it an A plus just because there could be a better one. Time is pass rush. Course for the Steelers. Their defense is literally um based on the fact of pass rush. TJ Watt, second best pass rusher in the NFL. He tied the NFL record for sacks last year. He's an absolute beast. Like. Speed is his game, like that is his thing. But his finesse moves and his pa and his power are there as well, obviously. Alex Highsmith, compliment to him. I I, th I I've learned that. Yep, he, he's a good compliment to him. Uh, Jernard Avery, uh, not really an edge guy, but I guess he's got to be this year. Uh, really lost his step on off the line in terms of explosive. His first step just isn't there, but he's always been good with his hands and especially his second move. Derek Zinga, um. Really is a young guy. I don't know. He looks really young, and he like he plays like he's really young as well. Two sacks last year with Denver. Um, I expect him to have like a five six sack season though this year. A lot of potential. As well as that, um, behind of course you got all these guys, all the guys up the middle. Uh, Larry and Joby, Cameron Harrigan, both have quarterbacks. Same thing with Chris Wormley. This is a really depthful and really good pass rush. You just don't want uh, Cameron Hayward or TJ Watt getting hurt. That could be a problem. 
A plus for the pass rush. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm being completely honest. Uh, but the depth is not super duper good. But the pa since TJ Watts got in there, their pass rush has been so good. Time for this cornerback position. Okay. Levi Wallace last year, a lot of what happened was he got burnt. I'll be honest with you. He got burnt a lot. But in the red zone, like, he actually was decent. Like, he didn't get a touchdown in the red zone last year. But he got burnt a lot last year. I'll be completely honest. 58%, yeah, against, but he, he got 81 targets for a reason. He had two touchdowns. These were bombs, too. Like, he got burned a couple times, and he misses a lot of tackles, too. Not a really sound player, to be honest. He's kind of just average, but in terms of playing zone and being, and being like, man-to-man -man in the red zone, he's not bad whatsoever. Uh, Cam Sutton, he's going to be their number one this year. He was honestly really, really good last year. Uh, the thing, thing with him is, uh, again, is he really good? able to shut down the number one receiver. He was not the number one guy last year. Of course, yeah, say what you want about the PFF grade, but on film, he looked really good. Um, Akello Witherspoon, he's a slot dude that just doesn't really play slot well. That's why he has three interceptions. He gets targeted a good amount, and he's just not a good tackler. He peaked with the 49ers in coverage, but I gotta admit, he's not, like, the worst slot you could have. 37.8. I didn't know it was that good. Like, I don't think I, I know he yeah, gave that a well, bad touchdown. Whatever. Um, there's 28.6 tackle for miss percentage. There's a reason for that. Um, he's kind of like a bad slot, but like, I guess he's gotten better in coverage. Because while I watched him on film, he gave up that touchdown. I'm like, dang, he got absolutely crossed up. But I guess he had a good year in the slot. Uh, James Pierre, there's a reason he, uh, he was a UDFA, but solid last year as a backup. I'm not even joking. He shut down some good receivers. I like what he sees. Uh, not gonna lie, if he has to go up against a big receiver, I'm a little scared. But other than that, this dude looked really good last year. Uh, Arthur Mallet, oof, ah, didn't play well last year. As an older dude, you kind of expect him to at least be able to sh uh, shut down someone. Didn't really do that last year. Justin Lane, kind of a backup, to be honest with you, special teamer. But yeah, a gunner guy. But overall, this is actually not the worst cornerback from my, I, I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm going to give this cornerback room a B-, minus because I don't think a Cam Sutton's going to be a true number one, being completely honest, but there's good depth there, and it's really not that bad at all. So 3.33 plus 12 is 15.33 out of 20. Time for this safety room. Okay, Nick Fitzpatrick will start off with him. Uh, he's getting a little overrated. Uh, in coverage, he's, it seemed in 2020 he really struggled to start the year. Uh, and that just came for the whole last year. He was not good last year. Yeah, like I said, not good. Uh, but he does make some plays. Uh, he's still a decent safety, obviously. But in coverage, he's not the same guy. And he's never been a great tackler. You just think, can Minka at least be somewhat competent over the middle? Because that's what they brought him in for, to be that guy who can stop plays over the middle. But in run defense, he's not great. Yeah, 9.5 missed tackle percentage. He's always never been a pretty much average tackler. He gave up two touchdowns last year. Yeah, but a lot of air yards, a lot of yards over the middle. And not only that, though, he do, he is kind of the guy. Yeah, it might not be his coverage. He might not be targeted, but he's kind of in that area usually when there's a touchdown. It's not great. Terrell Edmonds, um, just literally a box guy, but he's actually gotten somewhat better in coverage. So he's a little underrated, I think. I think he's coming to his own. Demonte Casey, of course, um, played for um, the Dallas last year. This dude's a turnover machine, but he's kind of like Trayvon Diggs in the way that he gets burned. But kind of limited that last year. Trey Norwood, meh. He's not the worst guy in the world, but he's definitely not a backup bad free safety. He's kind of a ball hawk as well. But um, this is not the worst free um, safety room in the NFL. But of course, Minka Fitzpatrick is a little overrated. <laughs> They gotta give the safety room the same, the same grade I gave him, um, the cornerback room a B minus because, yes, Minka Fitzpatrick is a, not ideal right now. He's actually playing pretty bad, but it's still Minka Fitzpatrick. He still makes big plays. You can't really say anything else other than that. And he, and when it comes to the big play moment, does not give up the deep ball. Uh, cor um, and then of course you have uh, Terrell Edmonds, really good tackler, um, really just hard hitter. Overall in the box, he's a menace. So when you have that, like you can't really say anything bad. The, the depth is there as well. So I don't, I don't really think it's that bad. But of course, Mega Fitzpatrick is really overrated. Time for this defensive uh, overall grade and average. Okay, 82 out of 100 for the um, points, which is B. But I got him a B plus. This is a really good defense. Of course, their run defense is going to be absolutely bad, really, really bad. But their pass defense and their pass rush will be one of the best in the NFL. So 
Even when teams run the ball, I don't trust me. Like that's not the reason they're gonna lose games. It's just not gonna be. Um, even though it was that bad, it really wasn't super bad. So yeah, this is a really good defense. It's a strength of this team. It's better for a while. Time of special teams though. So always with kicker Chris Boswell, reliable, gets the job done. Arguably had his best season last year. 90.1%, uh, 90% on field goals, really good. Yeah, 93.1 on extra points, but he misses a couple extra points every year. Percy Harvin, uh, or Presley Harvin, uh, he kicks absolute nukes. Dang, like, he's got a big foot, but, so, like, so you want, but he didn't really, like, kick it as far as he could. Gunnar Azlescu, uh, didn't have a great returning year last year, but still really, really good return. Did he get hurt last year or something? Yeah, whatever. In 2020, he was really good. Uh, Christian Kuntz, not the worst guy in the world as a punter, uh, as a long sniper, I guess, uh, don't really know much about him, really. I've heard of him, but just don't know much about him. Uh, special teams, decent. Special teams, I don't know, C+. Plus, they get the job done, really, I'll be honest with you. They don't do a lot. They don't do anything bad. They don't do anything great. 6 out of 10. It's not, nothing really that special. Time is overall team depth grade, though. Okay. Running back depth. Uh, C. Wide receiver depth. C-. minus. Tight end depth. C. Offensive line depth. D-. minus. Um, offensive overall depth, uh, C minus. Uh, linebacker depth, uh, C. Defensive line depth, B plus. Pass rush depth, B. Uh, cornerback depth, B. No, actually B plus. Safety depth, uh, B minus. Overall defensive depth, uh, B. Overall team depth, okay. So, like, C plus, I guess, because they get the job done. But if someone, if, if they're not going to be really be able to deal with injuries, let me put it that way. There's a lot of them. Okay, it comes out to 169 at a 235, which sits nicely at C+. Are they that good? I'll give them a C. I think this is an average roster. No, you know what? Whatever, let it be a C+. It's a little bit of a above average roster. You know what? I'm fair with that. This defense is really good. This um, offense is not great, but... A lot of holes in this roster, but I'll tell you what, they're going to be a lot more explosive and a lot less one-dimensional than they were last year. Let me put it that way. Yeah, that's the um, Steelers 2022 roster grades. Uh, see you in the next video. Of course, it's on to Daniel Jones. Here we go.